Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's QI Talk Time. Um, I'm Rashid, and I am a quality improvement facilitator based in the quality, National Quality Improvement Team here in Dr. Stevens. And I'm joined today by two of my colleagues, uh, Kira Kirk and Muriel Pate. And also online, we have Una Gettins, who are all going to talk to us about the No Tech Ask campaign for medication safety. So Kira um, is the national lead for the National Medication Safety Programme um, and the lead for the Improvement Collaborative for, to prevent hospital-acquired blood clots. She is an advisor in the WHO Patient Safety Programme and has been involved in developing the Global Patient Safety Challenge Medication Without Harm. So thanks, Kira, for joining us today. And we also have her colleague, Muriel Pate, who also works on the Medication Safety Programme and she's involved um, enormously in getting this HSC campaign up and running and she's worked as a hospital pharmacist in a number of hospitals in Dublin and is currently undertaking a diploma in uh, leadership and quality in healthcare and she's focusing on the discharge prescribing process in that diploma. So thanks Muriel for joining us. And also today we have Una Gettins and joining her in Mayo is Mary O'Malley and they're kindly going to share their journey of the No Check Ask campaign in Mayo University Hospital. She is a senior pharmacist in the orthopaedics department and has extensive experience from working over in Australia in the last year. So if you want to say hello, Una, that'd be great. Hi, how are you? Yeah, great, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Um, so we have a lot of people online. Thanks for letting us know where you are around the country. Um, over the last number of talk times, we've had a new following of groups from a number of different hospitals, which is fantastic. We're all trying to build our own local quality improvement networks. So thanks a million for joining us. You can let us know in the chat box. That would be great where you are. Um, the sound is normally better through the computer. So, um, or sorry, through the phone is better. You can use the computer, but the phone number is there with the event number. We also want to answer any of your queries or address any of your comments throughout the webinar, so please do use the chat box function, which you'll see a little bubble along the bottom of your screen where you can input any questions, and we'll deal with those at the end. We're also very active on Twitter, so you can follow us at QI Talk Time. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to my colleagues here who are going to bring you through some of the information. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, so we're really delighted to be here and joined by so many people on the webinar. And it's a great indication of how much interest there is in medication safety and also in this particular campaign. So I'm going to go through the background to the campaign and really the concepts and the messages which we've been really working really hard to try and convey in the campaign material. Um, so many of you will know that the No Check Ask campaign is part of a wider global patient safety challenge from the WHO called Medication Without Harm. Um, and the aim of that challenge is to reduce severe avoidable harm from medication um, by 50% globally over the next five years. Um, and many of you will also be aware already that the key priorities for that challenge are transitions of care, high-risk medicines and situations, and reducing inappropriate polypharmacy. Um, and there are um, technical reports which accompany each of those three priorities, and these were recently launched and are now available on the WHO website. So I'd really recommend having a look at those if you're interested in, in finding out a bit more. And it's also worth noting that, um, that Kira was the lead author for the report on transitions of care. So we're really delighted that people are able to um, access those now and make use of them. So in parallel to the Medication Without Harm um, challenge, there's a public um, engage or public facing component, and that is the No Check Ask campaign. So the campaign is to know your medicines and keep a list, to check that you're using the right medicine the right way, and to ask your healthcare professional if you're unsure. Um, so one of the reasons that we chose to work on this aspect of the challenge first is that it's so widely applicable to almost every part of the healthcare system. Um, and it will raise awareness of the global challenge among staff and patients right across Ireland, both in community and in acute settings. And there's parallels with the first WHO Global Patient Safety Challenge 
which was Clean Care is Safer Care, which was addressing healthcare-associated infections. So the public-facing component of that campaign was around hand hygiene. Um, so we'll start by showing you um, the new video, which will form the key part of the social media campaign. Um, so we've had the, we've been able to get um, an edit of the original WHO video um, specifically for our use here in Ireland. So um, this is its preview or uh, debut. debut. <laughs> Perfect, we're just going go back, back, to the, back to the slides. Um, thanks, Roisin. So the No Check Ask campaign really has the potential to um, really improve a number of aspects of medication safety, but particularly around transitions of care. Um, and we know, can we go back a slide? Yeah. And we know that safe um, prescribing at transitions of care is problematic. So with traditional medication history taking, we know from Irish research from um, Dr. Tamsin Grimes and many others that you know over 40% of people would have at least one medication error at the time of admission and over 50% of patients would experience um, prescribing errors and miscommunication at the time of discharge. And we do also know that people who use a memory aid like uh, their own medicines uh, list, really, it really improves their ability to recall their medicines accurately um, and that can really help provide a much more reliable initial medication history. Um, and then unfortunately, I suppose, as we all know, that there's no single source of medication history which is complete for everyone. So it really is crucial that the person who takes medication or their carer is really central to being able to achieve a complete medication history. Um, so, you know, someone could be prescribed something by their GP a few months ago and has now maybe stopped taking it or is taking a different dose for whatever reason. So, you know, that person really is central to, to getting an, ac an accurate history. So even in the future, if we have a, a fully-fledged electronic health record, which facilitates accurate in information transfer between community and acute boundaries, there will still be that need to engage with people to understand what they're actually taking at present. Um, so um, I suppose it's worth just mentioning the limitations. So while the person's medication list has the potential to really improve initial medication history taking, particularly in settings where um, it's not currently practiced to perform medicines reconciliation. It isn't a substitute for an accurate or a gold standard um, medication history, but it may really help to facilitate and speed up the ability to achieve this. And you may still need to get um, verification with another source of information, so it may still be necessary for some people to contact the community pharmacy or GP, um, and if there's any differences, to go back and clarify that with the, with the person themselves. We've skipped a couple of pages, sorry. Um, so, um, so this is the, my medicines list which has been um, developed for the campaign. Um, and it's really the key practical step, um, it's really the key practical step that we're asking people to take as part of the campaign, to keep an up-to-date list of their medicines and to take it with them to all um, healthcare appointments. It doesn't have to be this particular list, and um, people can print this one from um, safermeds.ie, or they can ask for a copy in community pharmacies as part of this campaign. Um, but they can also ask their pharmacy or GP to print a list for them, or they can just create their own from on paper or, or as a, an app, from an app on their phone. Um, and we're also suggesting that people take a photo of this list um, and keep it on their phone, or a photo of the labels on their medicines boxes. Um, our feedback is suggesting that it's really helpful to healthcare staff um, to have a photo like that, and it's something most people haven't thought of, but are very happy to do, and most people have their phones on them um, almost all the time. So we've worked with the Irish Pharmacy Union, the IPU, and the Irish College of GPs about the option for the person to ask their pharmacist or GP to print a copy of their current medicines for them. Both groups are very happy for us to encourage people to ask for a list to be printed, um, but really more as an alternative if people can't complete their own list. Um, and that's fine because we don't want this to become 
passive activity. We want people to engage and, if at all possible, to complete their own list um, and, and engage with healthcare staff about it. So there's lots of benefits um, associated with keeping a list. Um, Besides helping at transitions of care, and we're really looking to encourage that engagement with people about their medicines, um, and you know, and that is recommended to help promote um, adherence with medicines, and it can also help people and their GPs keep track of maybe what's needed for repeat prescriptions. A lot of the feedback that we've had um, in our consultations is that people see it as a really useful, tangible aid to help um, complete with family members, perhaps an older relative, and to help keep track of their medicines together. Um, and in particular, we've had a lot of engagement with Family Carers Ireland who can really see the benefits for their members and um, they'll be helping us with the rollout of the campaign. Um, so this is just a slide to kind of show, um, you know, really how widely we've, we've um, engaged with different groups, different patient groups um, and staff groups as part of the consultation um, and helping to develop the messages with this campaign. The medicines list itself was developed following on from work undertaken by um, Venetia Bagwan in, as part of her master's project in Tala Hospital. Um, and then more recently, um, we've worked with some of the organizations listed here, and we've also had NALA approval for it. Um, it's really important that the patient completes the, the list themselves if, if they can. And one of the key messages which you know, can be misinterpreted by staff, and one of the messages we're really keen to emphasize is that um, this is not just another task for it that staff will be expected to do. It's really important that um, by encouraging people to engage with the list themselves and know more about their medicines, perhaps with help from family member or care um, if they need it, is kind of central to the No Check Ask campaign and we're not expecting staff to complete the list. Um, and the piece around encouraging people to take that bit of responsibility is, is really important. Um, we have a number of posters available for use as part of the campaign, and again, we've had a lot of feedback from patient groups and stakeholders um, to make sure they had broad appeal before we finalised them. There are three examples here, and there's also a few more on the website. Um, it's probably worth mentioning that we, we actually had a lot of feedback, particularly around the age profile of people on the posters. It was quite interesting. So we actually started off with a different older lady as our main poster, but realised quite early on that um, People then saw that as a campaign um, really only aimed at older people. Um, and while obviously it is more common to be on a number of medicines as you get older, this campaign really is aimed at anyone who uses regular medicines. And by using some, by having younger people in, in a lot of the posters, it means that all age groups um, can see that it applies to them, and the images are still acceptable to older people as well. Um, so the five moments for medication safety is, um, has been kind of developed or introduced more recently from the WHO as part of um, the Medication Without Harm campaign. And they have a, a range of materials on their website now. Um, this is the poster that I think is most likely to be useful in practice. Um, there's two questions each step um, along the way, as opposed to five questions for each step in some of the other materials. We haven't done a lot of work on this yet, but we do have a lovely whiteboard video um, on, in the resources on the website. So it's something which could certainly be shown perhaps on screens in a waiting area, for example. Um, so the key campaign messages, um, keep an up-to-date list of your medicines, take it to all healthcare appointments, and that this information is really needed so that correct decisions can be made about your treatment or care. Um, Patients should, or people should complete their own list if they can, um, perhaps with help from family, and to encourage people um, that it may be helpful to discuss or share that list with family or carers. Um, and then also to promote the concept or the idea that it's helpful to keep a photo of that list on your phone or a photo of the labels from um, medicines boxes. So I'm going to hand over to um, Una Gessens now, um, and she's going to tell us about um, the experience from a um, from a site which is already using some of the campaign um, materials. Thanks. Hi, no worries, thanks. Um, so I'm Una, I'm a senior pharmacist below in Mayo University Hospital. Um, we launched a Know My Medicines leaflet last year. The idea was initially developed in May 2018 um, and it was part of our medication safety committee. Because we don't have a clinical pharmacist on all our wards, um, we're part of the issue was that there was um, obviously medication errors on admission and discharge, um, which is the same probably in every hospital. 
so our chief pharmacist and the nurse practice development coordinator, um, along with people from the Med Safety Committee, decided to launch the like Knowing My Medicines leaflet. They were printed and launched then in December 2018, as far as I can remember. Um, next slide. Um, from that, they were distributed to all the wards. There's some down at outpatients, um, down at emergency department, and throughout the hospital in different information leaflet stands. Um, like that, it was seen initially as one of those things, another job that a pharmacist or a nurse had to do. So we really worked hard to portray the message that it was up to the patient and their families. Um, they were all encouraged to complete the medicines information, the leaflet, so that they would have a list um, when they came into hospital the next time or when they went to their GP. So we worked hard on promoting the fact that it wasn't the hospital staff that had to fill it. The other thing that we did was contacted the diocesan secretaries and they were asked to put the information in their parish newsletter or their bulletin. That happened for some of the parishes, not all of the parishes. Um, and they were told then that the information leaflets were available in the hospital foyer or any information stands. And as well as that, if they had access to the internet, there was a link on the CELTA page for patients and for families to print off the leaflet. Um, the next step was to print them off and give them to, family, to GPs and pharmacies, but that hasn't happened yet. So this is what our information leaflet looks like. Um, on the front of it, we just have like the hospital logo and picture of the hospital. And then on the back of it, like we have um, information about filling it out. So it's basically tells people that it's not just about medicines that you're taking because quite often when you ask patients about you know what medications are you taking they don't tell you about the supplements the herbal remedies or their eye drops and stuff so we've clarified that on the back of it um, and then there's also some information about keeping medicines away from patients or from children and um, to stop any harm from happening and then on the flip side of that information leaflet um, it's the same. So you put in your patient details, your pharmacy, your GP, um, your allergies and how you reacted to them. And then we also have a section on it here for a date that you filled out the form. So when you come into hospital or when you go to your pharmacy or GP, you can see how old the form is or how new it is. And then you can adjust it accordingly. So we encourage all the patients to fill that out and it also helps know whether they're to take the medicine for long term or short term. Um, next slide. So these posters here, they've been printed off and they've been put up around the hospital as well, just as part of the World Health Organization Med Safety Challenge. So they are on most of the wards that throughout the hospital. Next slide. Sorry. So for me, um, what, do, what do I actually do with the slides? So I'm the pharmacist up on orthopaedics. Um, I started here about a year and a half ago, and I took on the role of, um, like, obviously doing your med history and med reconciliation, but making sure that I see the discharges as well to verify the prescriptions before they actually go home. Um, so I've been handing these leaflets out to the patients with their discharge prescriptions. Um, I generally give them to patients if they're on more than three medications. Um, when I go to counsel the patient, I hand them the information leaflet and I explain to them what it's for, how to use it, and I get ask them or their family to fill it out. I also tell them to bring it to their next GP visit. Um, if they're being readmitted to hospital, to bring it in with them as well. And I encourage them to keep them up, to keep the list up to date. Because when a patient comes into hospital, it's great to have a list. If you can, like, you know, people's eyes light up when you give, when the patient hands them a list. Um, and then if they have any issues, we try and encourage family to be there as well to help and the community pharmacy as well. If there's any changes or any new medications, we get them to ask their community pharmacist to add it to their list. 
Um, so this gives patients like the responsibility and ownership of their own medications. So they're not just literally taking all the medicines that the doctors tell them to take, that they now know like, oh, this is for my heart or this is for my blood pressure. So it makes um, explaining their medications a bit easier for for them. And then when they get used to looking at the list, it's easier for them to remember what they're actually taking it for, or why they're taking it, and how often they have to take it, whether it's a long-term or a short-term medication. Next slide. Sorry, back aside. I go back to, I think. Yep. So for me, the next one, yeah. So for me, um, when a patient is admitted to hospital and they hand me a medication list, if, if it is the hospital list or if not, if they even just have their medications written down on a piece of paper, like it really does reduce the um, prescribing errors on admission and it'll decrease the likelihood of a prescribing error on discharge as well because they, um, like if there's a mistake made on admission, quite often it will be carried through the whole way to discharge as well. So for when they hand me the list, it's great because we have to get at least two sources of medicines um, so if they hand me a list, then it's great. I can just ring the pharmacy or their GP and clarify the list with that or if they have their medicines with them as well. Um, so that's brilliant. And the other thing is patients generally who keep a list are more familiar with their medicines. So that's also a bonus. Um, and then when a patient is going home and they have a list, like if it, even if it is on a piece of paper, um, sometimes I will like update that list if I see that discharge patient. Um, so that will keep it up to date for the patient and they can carry that through to their next GP visit. Um, in Mayo, unfortunately, like we can't really measure our success rate because uh, we don't have a pharmacist on every ward. Um, we do encourage the nurses to active, like to hand them out, but we haven't measured the success rate since it has been rolled out. We try and encourage people to take them. I know from an orthopedics point of view, I have been handing them out and the nurses at weekends have been handing them out. Um, but having said that, I haven't seen too many patients readmitted with the Know My Medicines leaflet. So that was us. So basically, we just encourage our patients that they um, have a role to play in medication safety and knowing their medicines is a really important part of their um, journey through like being admitted to hospital right through to discharge back into community. And that's me now. Great, thanks a million for that. I'm going to hand back over to Kira, is it? Or, is or the patient? Is Mary? Yeah, I can, we'll put Mary on now. Yeah, yeah oh great, Mary. thanks very much. And just to say actually to people online who are having trouble uh, hearing, you are, the sound is better and more reliable over the phone. If your internet brand bandwidth can affect the sound uh, transferability over the internet. So if you have a phone beside you, we've put in the dial-in details there and it, it doesn't drop off the phone. Sometimes it does drop off the computer, just so you know. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, Mary here. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah, okay. Just, I happen to know if I have to say really just a little bit from my own perspective and uh, my experience with the patient and my husband who was very sick at the time and um, spent quite a lot of time in hospital. And he found out as time went on that it was a great advantage to have a list of his medicines when he'd come in. The doctors really appreciated. Now he was a smoker and he ended up writing it on the back of the cigarette packet at the time mm -hmm. and something that he could fit into his pocket easily. And that was kind of hardy as well. You know, there wasn't going to tear in his pocket. So that's why he ended up writing it on that. But the, the consultant, uh, his own doctor, or the pharmacist indeed, really appreciated getting that list and checking off other medicines because he was on an awful lot of medicines at the time. Um, he, um, yeah, he, he did it. I don't think anybody asked him to do it at the time. He just saw the advantages of it himself. I just think that it's going to be really important to, to advertise all this and to get it out there. I've asked several people and they don't know anything about it. Maybe they haven't had the experience of being in hospital and getting the form, getting the leaflet. But um, it's just to get a campaign going, I think, you know, where it's on television, where it's on newspapers, whatever, to create an awareness of how important it is.
for people to know their own medicines. And um, yeah, and as, as well as that, in hospital, I've been with patients who have, where there have been mistakes made maybe in administering medicines. And the patient at the time that I was with uh, was aware of her own medicines and she was able to say, no, that's not what I'm supposed to get. And she was right. But sometimes patients aren't able to speak out for themselves. So I'm wondering if there's some way that a patient, that um, the dispensing nurse would have something to check with by the patient's bed or near the patient or whatever. Would there be a list there just to help patients? I have a sister who is, um, who is blind as well. You know, it can be very difficult if her carer isn't there beside her at the time. So there's a lot of problems I see there from the patient's perspective anyway. Um, yeah, that's about, that's about all I have to say, I think, really, about... Um, just I, I do think something something small and hard and maybe covered with plastic would be very useful as well. Something that doesn't get torn or worn when it's being carried all the time in somebody's pocket. And um, thank you very much, Mary. Yeah, for, that's for it. Yeah. Yeah. A suggestion. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hand over to Kira, who's going to continue on with our, our content. Yes, and thank you very much for that, Una and Mary. And um, I think, Mary, as, as you've highlighted, some people have figured this out themselves and some people do keep a list and they bring it with them. And as you say, it leads to great delight for any of the healthcare professionals um, when somebody does have a list. Uh, it's, it's just really helpful. Um, the, I, I'll just run through some of the campaign materials because I think they will address some of the things you, you raised and then, then, we can, um, then we can kind of focus on any, any questions that remain. Yeah. Um, so the, one of the core pieces of this campaign is um, using social media um, to uh, you know, you will probably have noticed in some of your social media streams, you will have promoted messages, and this will be going out as a, pro a promoted message um, via Facebook and, and Twitter as the promoted campaign, and also via HSE social media channels. Um, so some of the tools that have been developed, the, the video that Muriel showed, and a, a, a much shorter one, which is really a GIF, um, they will be going out in various uh, various posts for two weeks in July and again for two weeks in September. The physical campaign, so we, it, as part of our engagement, we were asking people what they thought of the met methods, how should we promote this, how should we get the message to people, because really we're talking about getting to people, uh, anybody who's using medication regularly, um, it's not just people who are in hospital, it's not just people who are very unwell, it's just anybody who, who uses medication re regularly. And while social media reaches some people, it, it doesn't necessarily reach all of our group. And so the, um, the promoting the, leaf, the My Medicines leaf, list as leaflets and posters in community pharmacies was felt to be a way that we could really get the message to people who otherwise might not see it. Um, and that is in collaboration with, with the Irish Pharmacy Union. So community pharmacies now um, should all have their supplies and hopefully will be um, presenting them uh, either already or, or in the coming weeks. Um, we also have, have posters, so GPs, um, should be receiving posters uh, around now, and we are also going to send them out to health centres and primary care centres. We've just been working on one particular design um, for that, and that will be going out um, over the summer. Uh, we have suggestions for, for local campaigns, so obviously it's, it's great to have so many people tuning in, and I, I think and hope that you'll all be thinking about how you can use these materials and how you can promote the message um, locally. Um, some of the suggestions are on, so all, all of our material is on safermed.ie, and in particular on the resources section. And the suggestions for a local campaign, displaying posters 
um, showing videos on screens in public areas, uh, promoting, promoting it on uh, the hospital website, and I know uh, hospital or, or your organization's website, and I know, Una, you mentioned that it's on the sales one, um, and in particular with an easy link to the My Medicines list, because that's the, that's the kind of action that you want people to take. They want it to be as easy as possible to print that out. Um, and also, uh, depending on where you work, you may have some very active social media channels. And so when this social media campaign is going out, that you may um, also share the videos, um, tweets, and messages on your channels. For hospitals in particular, and I saw there was some, some um, conversation about this on, on the chat um, forum there, for some, some places that we think it may be particularly useful are in outpatient departments, um, pre-admission clinics, and for people coming in as elective admissions. Um, in particular, I know, I know in, in Tala, I think in Vincent's and probably some other places, um, enclosing a list with appointment letters can be very helpful um, because it, it just gives people a frame for, for um, filling in that information and thinking about it before they arrive. Um, with emergency departments, you obviously are, are coming in um, without notice that this you're going to be presenting. But um, similarly, some, some of the, pe some of the um, nurses we engaged with who work in emergency departments felt that the leaflets could be in reception so that people could actually fill them in as, as they're waiting. Um, and also in all of those areas, anywhere there's a waiting area really, that the posters and videos could, could be there and that people you know, could sort of gradually pick up on that message. Um, for discharge, uh, again, I think as Muriel highlighted, we, we know that in most cases we don't have healthcare professionals who have enough time to fill in a, a medicines list for people, although in some settings I know that this is done, so it's great if it can be done, but even if the blank medicines list is given to somebody as they're being discharged and advising them to complete it at home, um, so that they then have an up-to-date list for appointments. And Una, I think, highlighted that as well as being particularly useful because I think when people have been discharged, they probably are going to be coming back in for an appointment. So really, just to give, it, uh, to give a summary, um, you know, we invite you, as those of you who are healthcare professionals joining, to actually ask for a medicines list and if people have one, to refer to it and use it. Um, really important is to give it back to the person. So we have a note on it to say this belongs to the patient and, and give it back to them. I know that this is one of the problems where medicines lists are being used, that staff are inclined to take it, use it and file it. And that's not the idea. The idea is that you give it back to the person and then they can update their list as, as time goes on. And the key messages really are to know, check, and ask. The message goes two ways. So we've talked about people using medicines and supporting them with that. But it's also a message for healthcare professionals to know the medicines that you are prescribing, dispensing, administering, to check that you have the five rights, the, um, and that the ask step is really about interacting with the people using medicines to make sure that they understand the directions and that, that you're really both um, in agreement with each other on, on the treatment plan. Oh, there we go. So um, I mentioned safermeds.ie uh, and um, Noemi in the room here has been helping us with getting a lot of material onto the website. And I'm just highlighting on, on the left the, the front page with various different ways of getting access to these. And then some of the many materials. So there are, there are a number of videos, um, a, a lot of posters, and we're just, we've just one more, um, one more poster to come, which is um, even more inclusive, has multiple pictures on the one poster. Uh, copies of the My Medicines list in, in colour in black and white. 
Um, and yes, and, and the videos, as I mentioned. Um, and just, I suppose, uh, uh, possibly preempting a, que a question, we are available. So the, the, all of the materials are there on safermeds.ie, and also we're available to answer any queries on safermeds at hse.ie, which is the email that, that will we'll get the team here. One, one thing, so we do have some materials which we can send out, but probably if you need more than a few posters or more than kind of 50 or 100 leaflets, um, you, you probably do need to get them printed locally. Uh, and I suppose that gives you the option then of choosing which materials, uh, possibly adjusting them if you want to, and you know picking what type of posters or what size uh, will suit your needs. So I think that is that's the end of our presentations, but we really did want to leave time for um, for questions. So we might just move into yeah. some of the questions. Uh, Kira, Muriel, Una, and Mary, thank you so much for uh, giving us a run through of all of the, that great content. Um, and uh, it's great to see that it's accessible for all our listeners online. Um, so I'm just going to flick down through the chat box here and just see if there's anything that we, we haven't addressed. Um, so we'll just start. Yeah, okay. So Catherine Donahue is just saying about the patient's experience and how it's great to, to hear from a patient, which I couldn't agree more. And obviously, as well, that creative aspect is good mm -hmm. to know. Uh, keeping a list in whatever way is suitable for the patient, I think everyone would advocate mm -hmm. for that. Um, Maureen is saying, love the practical experience on your tips on use of medications list, uh, helping patients to speak out for themselves. Then Joanne Finn is, any ideas for measuring success in Mayo? Hopefully numbers of errors reducing. Could try measuring numbers of patients attending OPD post-admission with leaflet. Phone mm -hmm. survey of patients given the leaflet to check. Have they still got it? Are they still using it? Measurement can be so challenging, but it does help us to keep improving. And I know, Kira and Muriel, you are looking to do a more intensive uh, measurement um, yeah. of this in, in a number of situations. Uh, maybe elaborate a little bit on that. Yes, and I think, um, you know, as Una was saying, this, this seems like a good idea. We know it's a good idea. We know it will work well if people fill in the list but actually measuring the impact is, is a little bit challenging. I suppose some of, the, some of the easier measures are just do people, you know, counting whether people come with a medicines list, either at admission or um, at outpatients. Uh, but I know that they're not routine measurements, so it's probably more something that, that would need to happen periodically. Um, we are going to engage more thoroughly and um, possibly with, with a full evaluation, but kind of wait, waiting to see exactly what happens with that. But we, we are looking at some measures uh, in order to measure wh what is happening. Um, obviously, we are pushing this out around the, the country, and so it, it will need partnering with, with some groups to, to actually do a little bit more of a, a defined measurement. And also, it's not just measurement, it's not really just the numbers, it's getting feedback on what's good about this. Are there any issues with it? Are there things that could be tweaked? Are there, is there new experience that could be developed? Um, in particular, we, we've had um, some really good engagement with Family Carers Ireland, uh, and that group it seemed to just really engage with this campaign and um, feel that it's very useful for their members. So uh, in September, we're hoping to work with them a little bit more closely and probably build in some evaluation as part of that. Great, thanks, Kira. Um, and I think Joanne has mentioned something here as well. But I, th well, I think you did address Instagram. it really about lots of younger people using Instagram. We are engaging with the HSE Communications Department 
and I suppose just to you know we are limited in terms of finance and yeah. uh, budgeting in terms of TV and radio and wider broadcasting of this because that is extremely expensive so we're we're trying to utilize yeah. every aspect mm -hmm. of social media that we can. Mm. HSC now have an Instagram account and apparently we're one of the first things they're going to be pushing Fantastic, out. Fantastic, so it's yeah. a bit of a, a new experiment, but hopefully yeah. it'll yeah. be worthwhile. Yeah, and I think it was also mentioned, Mary, you mentioned about press, so national press. So um, obviously the national press choose what they want to focus on and what they don't want to focus on, but certainly we, we, we are issuing a press release um, next next Monday for Tuesday. The launch is on Tuesday. And that press release, we hope, will be taken up by um, some some of the um, public press, which would obviously spread the message much more effectively, really, than anything else we can do. Um, and we just have to wait and see if that happens. Yeah. It's something that, that, again, that will be, you know, it, it'll be, it'll be probably pushed in September as well, um, that, that we will have more than one one attempt at that. Um, but it just remains to be seen on. Yeah. yeah, it seems to resonate with a number of listeners that the power of social yeah. communities like mm. the GAA and mm. religious organisations and, you know, I think that is something that yeah. we, we could maybe explore a little bit further uh, in terms of disseminating uh, the information. So thanks for that, Niamh. Um, Neve is saying also that she likes the idea of having the blank meds list mm -hmm. in the ED waiting area, something positive could try and compile while you're waiting. Absolutely, yeah. And the ownership piece, I think, has come through really strongly mm -hmm. to write, both from from the patient's perspective and also from, from professionals. I think really important to, to advocate that the patient owns the list themselves. Um, so just moving on then, Ashleen, um, She's just, I think that was all, that yeah, whole piece same. of, you know, not handing it back to the patient and how easily they can get swallowed mm -hmm. up into that black hole in the ED department and never be seen again. Um, interesting point from Joanne Finn. So she's saying about social care professionals yeah. and how they see patients in OPD and absolutely routinely would ask about their medications. Um, mm -hmm. So they could help by giving blank lists to patients and encouraging them to fill out and be interdisciplinary champions. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. Joanne. That's a really good idea. And that could be something we could it link to the HCC office yeah. Yeah. Uh, here in the HCC. Uh, Saib is saying, will the campaign posters and leaflets be sent out to hospitals also or just to primary care community? And I suppose I probably addressed that as well. We, um, we know that for hospitals, you have so many multiple locations that we probably we, we could send a sample pack but really if you want to so we're happy to send a sample pack but i think if you if you want um if you want materials if you email us via safer meds and we'll see because we what we have is we have the this size the a3 posters um which are i suppose small and we've a relatively small quantity of them so we'd be happy to send them out but i think probably for hospitals that's more of a starter pack um because you may need a lot more particularly if you're using the list okay great uh, another question from jennifer hyde she's asking um as a future aspiration it would be great to have a recommendation from who hsqi that all electronic systems could be configured with the capability to print a patient's version of the list. Agree with empowerment, but a printout in addition would improve accuracy. Is this likely to happen for those of us moving to EHR? It would be really helpful. As Una and Muriel highlighted, My Medicines is not a standalone source of information, but it's a great start. And absolutely, and yeah. we know but that there's multiple a great pieces idea. of work being yeah. done on that. Um, and it's just, I think there's a lot of bespoke um, solutions out there at the moment and it is nationally yeah. trying to pull all of those together and to support that. I think an important point about that is that on discharge usually people aren't actually given a list of their discharge medication at all. So they're given a pr prescription to bring to their community pharmacy and or GP surgery but they're not actually given a copy for themselves. So I think one step would be to give 
that list to people, whether it's a My Medicines list or just a, 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 dis, you know, a copy of the discharge information. Uh, and I know that that is very challenging, particularly if you don't have an electronic system. If you do have an electronic system, even if it's a simple electronic system, it should be possible to, to develop that. I think mm. it would help. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Catherine Donoghue is saying that some of this measurement will be vis visible yeah. from the National Patient Safety Experience Survey. So I suppose keeping mm -hmm. a look at that annually and, and reviewing that to see if there's any changes in that uh, in alignment with our campaign mm -hmm. would be uh, really beneficial. So thanks for that. Um, we have another comment here from Geraldine Creighton who's saying congrats on the initiative. And is the TV campaign possible? We'd love that if you can yeah. uh, give us the money for it. Sure. So, the so the 200 grand? Yeah. 200,000. So. so a social media campaign is four <laughs> figures and a TV campaign is six figures. So yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we obviously would love that. And if pre press kits pick up on anything, there's possibilities that um, Muriel will be appearing on a, on a TV near you. But yes, we, we, we haven't been able to do that. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and I suppose in an effort to promote it through multiple channels, that's that's essentially what we're yeah. trying to do. And the multiple partners, the IPU, the ICGP, yeah. all the stakeholder engagements, you know, it's it's and just everyone online here are being advocates for it now. Mm -hmm. We have seventy five people online, which is fantastic. So if, yeah. if all of you take some ownership and tell some people yeah. about it, that's spreading it as well. So. And I, I think building on, on what Una was saying in Mayo, the local engagement, I, I hadn't thought of um, religious roots at all, but actually, of course, that's, that's a really good way of getting, of getting to people. And I know, again, some of those recommendations about basically anywhere that people congregate um, could be a good route of getting this. Mm -hmm. Kind of... Uh, Nearly, pretty much all of the groups that we've engaged with, any time we engage with people, they say this is a great idea, it's a very simple message, and that they could um, promote it. So I think any engagement any of you can do, it, it would be terrific to yeah, spread it. I think it's an ideal opportunity to, um, to really work with patient advocacy groups you know, um, right across mm. different hospital networks. Mm. It's a really nice campaign that people can see a tangible, you know, something tangible that people can do themselves to help their own care and to, you know, to have that partnership between patient groups and, and the healthcare staff right across all sorts of different settings. So I think it's a really nice campaign that can be used for, mm. for that. And is there any tips, uh, I suppose, even Una or Mary, that you might have um, in terms of that ownership piece and trying to empower patients themselves to really, you know, to use it and to understand the value of it? Um, I don't know if you've any experience from your Mayo um, side experiences. Um, hi, so it's Una. Just from like my perspective, with the one of the main things that I try and encourage people and you know i have i will admit i have filled them out for patients on discharge when they've had nobody to help them with it um like one of the key things for me on it is to highlight when something is just for short-term use um like on orthopedics we'll have our generic prescription of celebrex xarelto and um gabapentin on discharge so to highlight the fact that like, I, I will write out the regular medicines at the top of the leaflet and then at the bottom it will be like short term use only and the duration that the patient is to stay on it. So I think when you're, so that the, those medicines don't actually continue for months and months and months on end. Um, so I think when we're giving the leaflets to patients and families, it's really important to highlight the difference between the long-term and the short-term medications because we all know like when patients have left hospital and they've gone to their GP and if it's left on a hospital prescription it's automatically transcribed onto a GP prescription and then it just keeps going on and on. So I think from a safety point of view it's important to highlight the difference between both. Um, do you have anything Mary? One second. Just, um, Mary, Mary here. You were talking there about newspapers and them maybe not picking up on it and the cost of putting it into a national newspaper. But I think it's important to get it into the local newspapers and that's not very costly. And there are lots of different flyers and newspapers in North 
uh, just different things in the in the local community, and people do read them, and people like to get them, and this you know advertising um, papers and all that. So I think the local papers it would be really good to get it into them, and maybe not as costly just. Yeah, great. Okay. Thank you very much for for that. Uh, any last minute questions from any of our listeners? Great to have so many of you online. Um, joining us today. So Joanne has mentioned as well about frailty teams in ED. Yeah, that's absolutely so I think that's certainly an action mm -hmm. for the team afterwards is to link into that health and social care professional's absolutely, office yeah. and, and, and see about championing this through that office. Mm -hmm. Um absolutely. Um so we're good on time I think. So any other questions please put them in. But while you're doing that, just to say thanks so much to Kira, to Muriel, to Una and Mary for their efforts and for sharing um, such great information with everyone today. Uh, thank you very much. And um, just to say, this is the last QI talk time of our, our January to summer series. So we've had 12 QI talk times since January and we'd really value your feedback and we'd really love to hear from you. So be it that you're online today or that you know some people who are interested in it and haven't joined, please do share that SurveyMonkey um, handle there. Um, we also will be sending this out via, via HSC broadcast email and also to our QI Talk Timers mail shot. But we really would value um, some feedback and input into the planning for our QI Talk Time, which hopefully will be back up and running from September. Um, so really would be grateful if you'd take five to ten minutes just to, to fill that out for us. And thank you very much to Naomi, who's been instrumental um, in helping me get that up and running. And also, um, Maureen Flynn and Caroline uh, lennon Nally, part of the quality improvement team, are also trying to do a bit of network mapping for quality improvement. Um, and we also have a survey monkey on that. So we know that around the country there are a lot of small networks bubbling up in different hospitals, community healthcare organisations, trying to bring together teams who are interested in QI. So we want to try to support those teams if we can and identify where those networks are nationally. And I suppose the purpose of that is to pro profile and achieve greater connections across existing and emerging QI networks. So the link for that is there. We will copy those links into the um, chat box so that you have them. No more questions have come in, so uh, I think that will be it. Um, so thank you so much again for tuning in and for um, keeping up to date with QI Talk Time. Um, we'll be back again with a new schedule in September 2019, and hopefully all your feedback will um, inform that. So keep an eye on qualityimprovement.ie and the QI Talk Time webpage. Also, this has been recorded, and the slide set will be available online after today's webinar, probably by the end of the week. And please do tell your colleagues about QI Talk Time and spread the word. So thank you very much for joining and um, please get in touch with either myself or Naomi if you want to be added to the mail list or uh, direct any of your colleagues if they have any queries to us. Thank you very much.